Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on solving rational equations. Now let's get started. Now when solving rational equations, the goal is just the same as solving any other equation. We want to solve for x. So now let's look at our example of 1 over x plus 3 plus 5 over x squared minus 9 equals 2 over x minus 3. Now the first thing we want to do is factor these equations if necessary. So let's look at ours and yes, I see x squared minus 9 could be factored to x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now we need to find the exclusions. Now what are the exclusions? Well, this is what x cannot be. Now you might ask me why do we need to find out what x cannot be? And the reason is is we're dealing with fractions and when we have fractions we have denominators and with fractions denominators can never equal zero. So we have to find out which values of x would cause our denominator to equal zero. Now if your denominator is real simple like this first one, it's real easy for us to look at that and say what plus three would equal zero? Well negative three plus three would equal zero. Therefore, x cannot equal negative 3. So here's what that would look like algebraically. We would take that denominator of x plus 3, and instead of setting it equal to 0, let's set it not equal to 0, because this is what we don't want x to equal. We just subtract 3 from both sides, and x cannot equal negative 3. Now, we could do the same for x squared minus 9, but we've already factored it, and it's much easier to find out what x cannot be, what your exclusions need to be, if your denominator is in factored form. Well, we just did x plus 3, so now let's move on to x minus 3. So we're going to say x minus 3 cannot equal 0. And in this case, we would add 3 to both sides, and therefore x cannot equal positive 3. Now we can move on to our last denominator and as you see it is x minus 3 and we've already done that. So we have found all of our exclusions. x cannot equal negative 3 and x cannot equal 3. So now let's move on and let's find our common denominator for um, all of these terms. Now in order to find our common denominator let's look up at the denominators that we have up here. Now, the first one we have the denominator of x plus 3. On the right side of the equation we have x minus 3, but this factored denominator is x plus 3 times x minus 3. Well, the first equation would be just like this one if it had x minus 3. So that means we would need to multiply this whole fraction by x minus 3 over x minus 3. Now let's look over here at this one. This one, if I could multiply this one by x plus 3, it would also have this same denominator. So what I'm trying to say is our common denominator would be x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now, going back to what I said just a minute ago, what do we need to multiply each side of the equation by? Well, up here, we need to multiply this denominator by x minus 3, which means if we're going to multiply the denominator by x minus 3, we also have to multiply the numerator by x minus 3. Now, over here, on the right side of the equation, this denominator was missing x plus 3. So if I multiply the denominator by x plus 3, I also have to multiply the numerator by x plus 3. So now we can rewrite this equation using our common denominator. And it would look like this. We would have x minus 3 times 1, now I'm not going to put times 1 because x minus 3 times 1 would just be x minus 3, plus 5 equals 2 times x plus 3. 
and we will put that over our common denominator of x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now, do you see what I did? This x plus 3 came from this right here. Uh, excuse me, this x minus 3 came from x minus 3 times 1. And then I have plus 5, which came from right here. And then equals 2 times x plus 3. And that came from right here, where I had to multiply x plus 3 to the 2. Now, because we are solving for x, and we have this common denominator, we actually don't even need to use it anymore, so you can cross it out. Once you have that common denominator, we can go ahead and cross it out. And we are just going to work now with simplifying the numerator. So let's go ahead and do that to solve for x. We have x minus 3 plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 6. And so do you see what I did? I just distributed 2 times x and 2 times 3. Okay, on the left side, I can combine negative 3 and plus 5. So on the left side, I have x plus 2. And on the right side of the equation, I have 2x plus 6. Now, you can do it either way, but I'm just going to go ahead and subtract x from both sides. And when I do that, I have 2 equals x plus 6. And now the last thing I need to do is subtract 6 from both sides. And when I do that, I have x equals negative 4. Now before you can be finished, you need to go back up and check to see if your answer is one of the exclusions. And in this example, we got x to equal negative 4, and that is not negative 3 or positive 3. So negative 4 is our solution for x. So, like I said, please check, excuse me, check for your exclusions, okay, before you, before you move on to the next problem. Okay, so now let's go on and let's try another example. Okay, this example is 3x over x minus 3 equals 2x plus 3 over x minus 3. Now, the first thing we need to do is check to see if we need to factor our denominators. And each denominator is x minus 3. So they do not need to be factored. They are, they are already as simplified as they can get. So that means we need to move on now, and let's go ahead and find our exclusions. What is it in our denominator that x cannot equal? Well, let's go ahead and do this algebraically. Uh, we have x minus 3 in our denominator, and that cannot equal 0. So you're going to add 3 to both sides, and you will get that x cannot equal positive 3. Now, since both of our denominators have x or x minus 3, that means we do just have this one exclusion. Now also in this equation that we're looking at, um, our denominators are already common. They already are both x minus 3. So we don't even have to find a common denominator. So that means we're ready to solve for x. Now if you remember with the last example, I said once we have our common denominator, we can cross it out. So let's just go ahead and do that right here. And that means we are just now working with the numerators. 3x equals 2x plus 3. Okay? And from here, we can solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And when I do that, I now have x equals 3. Now, is 3 my solution for x? Or let me reword that question. Can 3 be my solution for x? Now remember, we need to look back up here at our exclusion. And right here, we say that x cannot equal 3. Therefore, 3 is not our solution for x. And so that means there is no solution for this equation. Now I hope this video has been a good introduction 
for solving rational equations, and I hope it's helped you a little bit. And I look forward to working with you again in the future. Bye-bye.